Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. This is another video in the series of tutorials that Howard from IceFlowStudios.com and I are doing on web elements. And today we're going to talk about creating ribbons. We're going to create three different kinds of ribbons here that I have on this little slider. This sort of just straight ribbon, which is very popular in web design right now. This corner straight ribbon, uh, where it's very sharp, it's very sharply wrapping around the corner of our little slider, and also the more rounded ribbon, the one that just looks like it's kind of looping up and around the corner. We're going to cover creating all three of those kinds of ribbons today. We're going to have a blast doing it. Uh, this is just, we're going to be wrapping around the slider. You're going to have to create something of your own that you can wrap around. It can really just be a, a white box if you want. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to close this file, this sort of reference file, and here's the file that we're going to start with, or I'm going to start with. Um, if you would like to have something to start with, it can just be as easy as, let me just shut these off, I would just create a new layer and just drop in like a light gray or something of that nature, something like this. Drop in a nice light gray and then just go filter, noise, add noise, and add, you know, a good, you know, three or four percent noise. So you give yourself a nice little background to work over. And then just find a stock photo or something, drag that in, and we can wrap some ribbons around that. So I'm going to use this little um, slider that I created. This is a photograph that I shot uh, about maybe a year and a half ago. It was back close to the beginning of 2011 um, of a Ferrari 458 Italia, which is an amazing car, both inside and out. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to grab the rectangle tool here and we're going to set it to draw shape layers. We're just going to drag out uh, our first ribbon which is going to stretch right across here and it's basically going to have the name of the car, the you know Ferrari 458. We'll just throw that text in there. Uh, let's go ahead and set the color of this shape layer. We're going to choose a very light gray, almost the same light gray, almost light grayish blue as the border here. Uh, and by the way, that is the hex code of F0, F4, F5. Hit OK. And what I'm going to do is we're going to zoom in on this. And with these ribbons, what we want them to do is we want them to sort of stick out past the edge of the object wrapping a little bit because we need to be able to show that it's wrapping around. And we're going to create that shape that sort of gives us that, that fake 3D look in just a moment. Before we do that, however, we're going to make this guy look nice and ribbony by going ahead and adding some layer styles to this. So we're going to start with a nice pattern overlay. So let's come over here and go layer, layer style, pattern overlay. Now, really the only reason we're using a pattern overlay is because I want to add some grain to this shape. So we're going to choose any one of these patterns and actually, so you know what exactly I'm doing, I'm using one of the artist surfaces patterns. That's the library I've got open. It's just default with Photoshop. But I'm going to grab one of these top uh, patterns. That looks pretty nice, but you can see the grain is still far too big, so we're just going to knock the scale way down until it's just basically texture. We're going to set the blend mode to soft light, and it kind of disappears. So let's try one of the other patterns until you get something that you can really sort of start to see. Um, maybe set it to overlay, whatever starts to give you some texture, even maybe make it a little bit bigger. There we go, we're seeing a little bit of texture there and just play around. Really, there's no right texture. There's no wrong texture. You just want to add a little bit of a grainy look. Actually, that's a little bit too intense. There we go. Soft light. That looks cool. Very, very subtle, but definitely noticeable. And after that, we need to go ahead and give it a drop shadow. So go ahead and tick on drop shadow. We're going to set this to a blend mode of normal and uncheck use global light and set the angle to 90. We just want the shadow to go straight down below our uh, ribbon shape and reduce the opacity to about 30%. This is going to be partially dependent upon how bright or dark the image you're wrapping around is, but really, I mean, if you come to think about it, it shouldn't matter all that that much because it really should stay the same no matter what the, uh, the content underneath looks like. But we're going to go with 30% for what we've got going on here. We're going to set the distance to about 3 pixels, and let's just reduce the size just a little bit. Uh, not a little more than 1. Let's go with about 4. That looks cool. All right, so once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and add an inner shadow. Now, this inner shadow is basically going to be a little highlight running across the top, so we'll set the blend mode to normal, and we're going to set the color to white. You can see that it essentially has disappeared, but it's still sort of there. We're going to reduce the opacity just a touch, down to 60%. Deselect use global light, and set the angle to 90 degrees. Set the distance to 1, and we're actually going to leave a little bit of a blur on this, so we're going to just reduce the size to about 1 pixel, like so. Now, what we need to do here is apply a little bit of a gradient to this. We want to sort of make the color change across the course of this ribbon. So go ahead and add gradient overlay. And 
The important thing to think about here is we want to be able to change the color of this ribbon later on. So we're only going to use monochromatic grading here, something that's a black to white or a dark gray to a light gray, something like that, and use soft light or overlay. So we're just affecting the brightness values of the ribbon underneath. We can go ahead and change the color to a bright green if we want, and this gradient will still interact with that color. So what we'll do is we're just going to right off the bat set this to soft light and we can see that we're getting some interaction there with even the very bright grayish blue. And we're going to set the gradient. Um, I'm going to actually leave the right hand handle white. We're going to double click the black handle here and we're going to set this to 606060. So just sort of a just darker than 50% gray gray. Hit OK. OK. And we can even reduce the opacity of this a little bit. Again, we might want to leave it up for this initial ribbon, but you know what, just for the sake of continuity, I'm going to reduce to 50%. And there we go, hit OK. Now that we've done that, we're going to zoom way in on this guy. I'm just using my magnifying glass tool. And what you want to do is grab the Add Anchor Point tool. If you click and hold on the Pen tool, it'll pop out. And notice we've got our white arrow. That's going to allow us to select our vector shape if it's deselected. In this case, it's already selected. You can see sort of the path line. And then just use this pen tool and try to select about the, the center of our rectangle on the left-hand side. So there we go. We've added one anchor point. We've got two tangent handles shooting out of it. You can ignore those tangent handles. They're actually going to mess us up in just a moment, but I'll show you how to fix it. Grab the direct selection tool. That's the white arrow. Hotkey is A. Select that uh, anchor point that we just created. And I'm holding down my shift key, and I'm just using my right arrow key. Just nudge over one, two, three. Let's go for a fourth time. There we go. Super cool. Now go back to the pen tool and grab the convert point tool. All you have to do with this is just click on that anchor point and it's going to suck those tangent handles right in and get rid of them. Great. Just like that. Let's zoom back out and you can see now we have a much more ribbony looking shape. Now we're going to create the bit of this ribbon that's really going to make it look three dimensional. So go ahead and grab the rectangle tool and we're going to zoom in a little bit here. And what we want to do is just go ahead and hit the Enter key just to make sure we've deselected our, our path that we had created before. And I'm just going to drag out a rectangle. And you're going to see a couple things are going to happen here. We're going to get that layer style of the last, la of the, or last shape layer, essentially. We want to get rid of that. So just up here in the Tool Options bar, I'm just going to select that little drop-down menu next to Style and choose No Style. It's going to get rid of that and just leave us with a filled shape, which is awesome. I'm going to shift this guy down and just drop him right there at the base of our uh, ribbon shape. It's more important that it's aligned with the bottom right corner of our ribbon than anything else. Once we've done that, go ahead and hit Command or Control T to free transform this. Right click somewhere within uh, your free transform anchor handles here and just choose skew. And we're going to choose to skew the vertical of this. Uh, let's go for negative 45. So we're just going to drop that down about 45 degrees. Hit OK. And again, use the Move tool and just drag it straight down. We're looking to align these two bottom corners here to make it really whoop, to make it really look like they're coming right out of each other. So there we go. Something like that's cool. And just to help us get a grasp of what this is going to look like, we're going to drag this. We're going to call this ribbon uh, under. So we're going to drag this ribbon under below the ribbon shape. And you can see there that the shadow of the ribbon is actually interacting with the shape, which is awesome. We just need to now mask this to our slider to make it look like it's just, hey, sliding and wrapping right behind it. Before we do that, I'm just going to name this shape Ribbon Face. So we're just keeping ourselves organized here. Go back to the ribbon under layer and grab the rectangular marquee tool. Now, this is something that's kind of cool. We do already have a mask on this fill layer. However, it's a vector mask. You can have a vector mask and a layer mask on one layer. I believe since like Photoshop, I want to say CS3, but I could be wrong about that. So we're going to drag out a selection that's going to land right on the exact edge of our slider. And I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, and I'm just going to select the Add, Ma Add Layer Mask button here at the base of the Layers panel. Click that. You can see it hides that. And now our shape is essentially running right around behind uh, the slider. Now, a couple things that I just want to mention here. We would probably want to make this a little bit darker, so I'm just going to double click the color thumbnail for this for this ribbon under or the, the side of the ribbon layer here. And let's just reduce the brightness a little bit. So let's bring it down. 70 might be just a touch too dark. Let's go to like 75% brightness, something like that's kind of cool. Hit OK. And also, it really just sort of looks like it's running right into the slider. If you look closely, I have an outer glow on the slider, which is essentially acting like a shadow all around it. I want that shadow to interact with this, uh, this side of the ribbon as well. So what I need to do is drag this shape layer beneath my slider layer group and just drop it. 
There we go. And you can see that little bit of outer glow is just going to interact there with our, uh, our little edge of the ribbon. So there we go. We've sort of created the first ribbon. Let's throw some text on here just to uh, sort of indicate what we've got going on here as far as this car is concerned. So I'm going to grab my type tool here. I'm not even going to worry about color so much. I mean, I, I guess I'll set it to black just so we can see it. But we're going to change the color momentarily. I'm using the font face six caps. I believe it's a free font. Um, just run a quick font search for it. It should be on Defont or FontSquirrel.com, one or the other. There are two sites that are frequent. Uh, we're just going to type out the word Ferrari and then space 458 space Italia. And I believe I spelled that correctly. I'm going to hit Command or Control Enter to commit those changes. Grab my Move tool and let's shift this right down to about there. That looks cool. Now, we're going to change the color of this just a little bit. I want the word Ferrari. I really like this dark bluish purplish tone coming off the tire. So I'm going to double click on my text layer. I'm going to highlight the word Ferrari. And I'm going to go up here to the color. And my, uh, my cursor becomes that eyedropper. And I'm going to choose that sort of dark blue, bluish purplish color. Hit OK. There we go. So we've colored that. Very subtle change. And then 458 Italia, we want that definitely to be the Ferrari red. So we're going to choose one of these sort of reddish pinks. I mean, because of the color treatment that's on this image, it looks a little bit different. But let's just find a red that looks cool. And you know what? I kind of like this, this uh, brighter red that came off the brake. So something like that's cool. I might just knock down the brightness just a touch and maybe bump the saturation as well. So a couple little changes there. But that looks cool. I like that. C42749 is the hex code that I got. Hit OK and commit those text changes and we can zoom out a little bit. So you can see, there you go. We've created the first ribbon. Now let's go ahead and create our first corner ribbon. For our corner ribbon, we're going to use it essentially to identify the horsepower of this car. And we we're going to go ahead and we're going to create all the shapes first and we're going to add layer styles to it later and worry about sort of making it all look great later. So let's just create those shapes first and work with them. So I'm going to zoom in up here on the top left corner just a little bit like so. And I'm going to again grab my rectangle tool. I'm just going to drag out a rectangle. We are drawing shape layers as you can see. Great. Uh, I don't know if that's quite going to be big enough. I'm going to hit Command or Control T and just pull it out a little bit. Because this is a vector shape layer, we don't really need to worry about it getting all crazy pixelated or distorted or anything like that because we're just stretching out that vector mask. Now I'm going to hit Command or Control T and we're going to rotate this up holding the Shift key. You can see I've got my sort of bent arrow holding the Shift key until I see right up here in my tool options bar until I see that I'm rotating it on a 45 degree angle. So there we go, 45 degrees, cool. Shift it right over here to the top corner, uh, like about so, maybe, maybe right about there is cool. Something like that. Looks nice. Um, I'm actually going to make it a little bit thinner. There we go, like that. And commit those changes. Now, what we need to do is mask this again, just like we did with uh, the side of this ribbon. However, in this case, we're masking the face of our ribbon, and we need to leave some overlap. So I'm going to show you how I'm gonna, I do that. It's just kind of a cool little trick. We're going to create our first selection with the rectangular marquee tool right across the top. There we go. And we're going to add that layer mask, holding down the Alt or Option key just as we did uh, earlier when we masked. So Alt, click that, add layer mask. You can see it cuts that guy right off. Great. So the first part of this ribbon is masked in. We're going to create our second selection to mask this. However, remember, we don't want an exact cut. So what I'm going to do is I just have my rectangular marquee tool selected. I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to nudge this selection 10 pixels. Or if you hold down Shift, all you have to do is tap the left arrow key once bumps that guy right over. Make sure you've got the layer mask selected, Alt Backspace, Option Return to fill it with black. Commander Control D to deselect. Now we have this big chunk sticking out on the side. Great. Select that shape layer and grab the Move tool and just hold the Shift key and bump it 10 pixels straight up. So now what we've got going on here is a 10 pixel overlap both on the left side and the top. Just perfect for us to drop in a little bit of ribbon that would be wrapping around our slider. So let's go ahead and create that. Actually, let's fill this with a color first. So I'm just going to double click the shape layer here. And, oh, I don't know. Let's go with um, a little bit of a reddish color. So let's go with D6406B, something like that, maybe a pinkish red. I can go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to grab the rectangle tool again. And I'm just going to draw out one little square and we'll duplicate it. So I'm going to draw a square like so. And I'm going to drag it beneath the ribbon face, which is this pink shape layer. Drag it beneath that so it's hiding behind him so we can see exactly what we're looking at as far as lining this up. Grab my move tool and nudge it up one. Just nudge it over. There we go, just like that. So you can see that it's just going to run straight into the slider. We're going to have to mask it. Don't worry about that yet. 
Grab that shape, Commander Control J to duplicate the layer. Drag it right down here. And there we go, very cool. There's a little bit hanging out, one pixel. We can mask that off as well. So let's go ahead and create our masks. Grab the rectangular marquee tool. Let's mask off that one pixel that's hanging out. Alt click, create the mask to hide what we select. And also create a second selection right there. Because so we're going to cut off this entire part of this black box. We already have our layer mask. Alt backspace to fill that with black. It's going to hide that. Great. So if I deselect, you can see that the first part of our ribbon looks like it's wrapping around. We just have to do the same with the top. So go ahead and draw out that selection. Select that shape layer. Alt, click, add the layer mask. And we hide that. So there we go. All we now need to do is change the color of these shape layers to make them a little bit darker than the ribbon. And it's just naturally going to look like it's sort of wrapping around. And we won't even have added any layer styles yet. We're going to do that in a minute, though. Double click on the first of these. Sample that very pinkish color. And we're just going to reduce the brightness. So I'm just going to down, 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 maybe down one more. There we go. So 702238 would be our color. I'm going to double click in there to select it. Command or Control C to copy it. And then double click on this layer. Replace that. Hit OK. And there we go. So we've got our ribbon that already looks sort of like it's wrapping around the top corner of the slider. Let's go ahead and add some layer styles and top it off. We're going to start it off with a drop shadow. So select the, the layer, or excuse me, the ribbon face layer, the shape layer up top right here, the light pink one, neither of the dark ones. And we're going to go layer, layer style, and let's kick it off with a drop shadow. So we're going to go drop shadow, and essentially we're going to create a nice subtle drop shadow, but we need the drop shadow to be casting in as if the light source is up here, bam, like that. So we want the shadow to be cast on the contents of our slider. So we're going to set the blend mode to multiply, that's great. We're going to deselect use global light, and we've got this on a 45 degree angle, but 45 degrees, you're going to see it's going to run that way and cast the shadow out over here. We don't want that. In order to swing it over, the angle is 135 degrees. There we go, cool. Set the distance to 3 pixels and a size of 4 pixels, and also reduce the opacity a bit. Let's knock it way down to about 20. There we go, nice subtle drop shadow, it looks great. We're also going to add an inner shadow. The inner shadow, as we seem to normally do here with these web elements, is going to be more of a, a highlight for the top of our shape. So we're going to set this to normal. We're going to set the fill color, or the shadow color, to white. We're going to set the opacity. Let's leave the opacity up um, until we see what exactly we're doing. Deselect, use global light. We're going to set the angle to 45 degrees. That's what we're just driving a, a little bit of a light across the very top of our shape here. Very cool. And we're going to set the distance to 1 and the size to 1. Nice. Now just reduce that opacity down to about 20%. Nice, subtle highlight. You know what? Let's bump that up to about 30. We really want to be able to notice that because I'm liking the way that looks. Let's go ahead and add a bevel and emboss. This is where things might get a little tricky, but just hang with me and you'll have no problem at all. Inner bevel, smooth. Depth remains at 100%. All piece of cake. Direction remains up. We're going to set the size to 1 pixel. 5 is a bit much. And we're going to set the use global light. We're going to set this to negative 135 degrees. We want this, the highlight, to be cast on the back side of our, uh, our ribbon. We really are using bevel and emboss just to get a highlight running along this side of the ribbon. We're going to get rid of this uh, shadow by just reducing the opacity to zero. And go ahead, and we're going to change the altitude here to about 20 degrees. And just reduce the opacity to whatever we set the inner shadow to, which I believe was 30%. So there we go, something like that. That looks cool. Next, we need to go ahead and add a gradient overlay. So here we go. With the gradient overlay, we're going to set it to soft light. And we're well, before we set it to soft light, actually, let's go ahead and set the angle to negative 135. Oh, not negative 135, just normal 135. We want it to start with white up here, run to black down at the bottom. So we're going to reduce the scale a little bit to kind of pull those gradient points together. You can see now we actually see the white and the black. And we're going to open up the gradient and use that same gradient we did before. We actually probably could have just saved the gradient up here by hitting New, and we wouldn't have to recolor this. But it's a piece of cake. Just select that black color stop and set it to 606060. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And we're going to set this to a blend mode of soft light. So you can see it's just interacting with that red. And we're going to reduce the opacity to about 50%. It's interacting with the red a little bit too much. So there we go, something like that's cool. And last but not least, we need to just add a pattern overlay here to give it that same sort of noisy texture that we gave our other ribbon. So again, scale this way down, something like that looks actually pretty cool, and set the blend mode to soft light. So just a nice subtle uh, 
pattern and texture. And the reason I'm not going to give you any hard and fast pattern overlay settings is because this is really going to entirely depend on the color of your ribbon. Some colors, darker colors, or uh, darker colors really are going to show up. Uh, the pattern is going to show up a lot more over them than, let's say, lighter colors. And lighter colors is going to show up more subtly. So it's just really going to depend on the color of your ribbon. But just know that that's how it's working. Cho basically, you can choose any of these patterns. You want to scale them way down. And then just blend mode of soft light. And then just play with the opacity until you get a good looking little ribbon. And it's all, again, going to be depending on the color that you chose. So go ahead and hit OK. That's that ribbon. All we need to do now is, again, take the sides of the ribbon and drag them down below our slider so we get that same kind of shadowing effect. There we go, just like that. Really isn't going to do too terrible, uh, too terribly much to the sides because they are already so dark, but we're going to keep them there anyway. Now, we're going to duplicate our text, this text. I'm just going to Alt and drag that text layer above this new ribbon layer we created. Grab my Move tool, and you can click anywhere on a text layer and just drag it. You can see here comes the text. Double click. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's do this a little bit differently. Let's go Window Character. And you can see color, it's showing us a little question mark. That's because we've got multiple colors in the text field. We're just going to ignore that and click it. We're going to bring this up to white. It's going to color all of the text in that text field white. Hit OK. Wonderful. Now that we've done that, we're going to rotate the text to an angle. So Command or Control T. Holding down my Shift key. Again, I'm going to keep an eye on the angle uh, input box up there. 15, 30, 45. Great. It's going to slide right into there. I need to make it just a little bit smaller. I'm going to size it down. I'm holding my Shift and Alt keys. That'd be Shift and Option on the Mac. Commit the changes by hitting the little check icon. And now double click on the text. And we're going to type, I believe this has 562 horsepower, something like that. What did I do for? 562, it's something around there. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. There we go. We're going to throw the text right in like that. And really, just to make it blend with the ribbon a little bit, we're just going to knock the opacity down to somewhere around 70. So there we go. We've created our corner ribbon. Let's zoom out to 100% and check it out. We now have created a straight on ribbon, and we've created a corner ribbon. Next, we're going to create a rounded corner ribbon, which is a super cool uh, ribbon and a neat little effect. So that's what's coming up next. Let's get started. Again, grab your rectangle tool. We're going to draw out another corner ribbon shape, just like that. I'm actually going to zoom in. And actually, as a brief aside, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but typically with these corner ribbons, if you make them too thin, they're going to look a little funky. They just seem kind of weak and out there. Um, so just if you're starting, it might be easier for you if you make thicker ribbons, kind of like what I'm doing here. Uh, but you know, go ahead and have fun with it. Try anything. But just something to keep in mind as you're working with these guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab this and we're going to free transform it, Command or Control T, and we're going to rotate it so we've got a ribbon stretching across the bottom left corner. So I'm going to pull down on this side. And again, watching my tool options bar until I see that guy hit 45 degrees. Go ahead and commit that change. If you don't create a corner ribbon on a straight 45 degree angle like I'm doing here, things can get a little bit interesting. Um, it's not it's not impossible, but it can make it a little bit uh, trickier to work with them and, and play around with them. I usually just like to go on straight 45s or either dr drop a ribbon straight into a piece of artwork or just come in straight from the side. But again, have fun with it and just see what you can create. Now, I don't think I've quite made this ribbon long enough, and I've already rotated it on this angle. So if I try to free transform it now, you can see I can't just pull one end straight out. So how do we go about correcting that problem if we want to maybe make this guy a little bit longer? Well, I'm going to drag him straight down a little bit just so I'm, I absolutely am going to have enough down here on this end. And what I'm going to do is grab my direct selection tool. It's the white arrow, hotkey A. And I'm going to select both anchor points right up here. Holding down my shift key, just select both of them. I'm holding down my shift key now, and I'm just going to tap my up arrow key and the left arrow key. Up and left, up and left, up and left, up and left, up and left. So now this is definitely going to be long enough. We're going to grab the move tool, and I'm going to shift it just a little bit. Oh, there we go. Something like that should be more than enough. Now we need to go ahead and mask it. We're going to mask it just like we masked this guy up here. Grab your rectangular marquee tool. Let's just pick one side of the ribbon to start with. I'm going to start with this side. Hold down my Alt or Option key, select the Add New Layer Mask button. It's going to hide that. Great. Drag that selection out over the bottom portion. Make sure you're aligned perfectly with the bottom of the object you're wrapping around. Zoom out. And with you need to make sure you have the Selection tool sele uh, selected. And hit the sh hold your Shift key and hit the down arrow key to knock that down one. Select that layer mask on this shape layer. Alt Backspace, Option Delete to fill it with black. Black is my foreground color. Command or Control D to deselect. Now that we've done that, select the shape layer, grab your move tool, and we just need to shift this guy to the left 10 pixels. 
So we're gonna hold down our shift key and tap the left arrow key. There we go, bumped it right over 10 pixels perfectly. So there's the foundation of our rounded uh, ribbon. Now, with this shape, I'm gonna use the pen tool to draw the sides of the ribbon. You could just create squares and have it run straight in, but I'm gonna add a little bit of a curve to it. So grab your pen tool, hotkey is the letter P. We're gonna zoom in here a little bit and I might change the color to something that's a little bit more noticeable, like a very bright blue, just so we can see what we're working with. And I've also selected the text layer beneath my shape layer. I've done that because I want this layer just to show up right, right from the jump beneath our ribbon face layer, the, our top ribbon. So I'm gonna select right here at the corner and I'm gonna click and add a point straight above it. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a curve just by clicking and dragging. And you can play with the curve. There we go. And then I'm just going to go loop this right around and close the path off. So there we go. It looks a little funny now, but remember, all of this area is going to be masked away. All we're going to see is this little curve. So we can do one of two things. We can duplicate this layer and drag it right up there, or we can draw a new path. We're going to duplicate this layer. Hit Command or Control J and drag it right over. And what we need to do is hit Command or Control T. And if I'm conceptualizing this right, we should right click and flip it vertically and then shift it over like so. Something like that. I don't know. That's not right. There we go. Maybe something like that. Let's see what, what kind of shape we have here. Yes, that looks about right. And we're going to line it right up there on a pixel by pixel level so it's going to line up perfectly with the edge of our ribbon. Cool, so now that we've got that, we can go ahead and create our mask and mask it to the slider. Again, just like we've been doing. So just create that selection to cover everything up. Alt click, add layer mask. Oh, wrong layer. There's the layer I want. Add that layer mask, there we go. Create another selection, select the correct layer. Alt, add layer mask, and there we go. So this ribbon is gonna be green. So we need to go in and change some colors and then we're gonna add a few layer styles and do a little bit of burning to really give it that rounded uh, effect that you uh, saw earlier in my pre-run image. So I'm going to just double click on the color thumbnail there and we're gonna go with a, a green. We're gonna grab a nice medium green like that, but I actually wanna desaturate it a little bit. So something like that. that's about cool, maybe 40% saturation. So that's 78BA70. Hit OK. And now we're going to do the same to the sides. I'm going to grab the one side. We're going to sample the top of the ribbon. And we're just going to make it a little bit darker. You don't want to go crazy and make it a super nutso amount darker because it's just going to look a little funky with the, um, the rounding. Again, you want to maintain some level of realism here. So we can see this is 568751 is our hex code. Double click it. Command or Control C to copy it. Double click on the other little blue tab here and paste it right in there, hit OK, and there we go, we've got that. Now, another brief note about creating these rounded corners or just creating corners on the bottom of a slider, if, especially if you're creating multiple ribbons, you always sort of want to have the ribbon wrap up and in. If we were to create these ribbons so they're wrapping down and away, like these little tabs were coming out of the bottom of the ribbon, it would look very, very strange. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're wrapping objects. Typically, you're going to see the wrapping going that way and not the other way. So at this point, it's all just easy stuff left. We're going to grab these two little tabs. We're not going to add any layer styles to these guys. We're going to drag them. Oop, what am I doing here? Let's undo that. We're just going to drag these guys beneath our slider. So you're going to see that little outer glow slash shadow from the slider is going to start affecting them, which is awesome, exactly what we want. Now we're going to select the front of that ribbon, this nice green shape layer right up here at the top. And we need to add a couple layer styles to this. So we're going to kick things off with a nice little drop shadow. We're going to go layer style, drop shadow, and... This drop shadow, we're going to uncheck use global light. We're going to set the angle to 45. We want the shadow to be cast down and away. Um, you could maybe cast it in. I don't know. It might look a little funny, but we're going to go with 45 in this case. I haven't spent that much time playing with it. We're going to set the opacity to 20%, the distance to 2, and the size to 3. There we go. Very cool. Um, and you don't want it to be too heavy because you don't want to be able to see that break there between your ribbons, uh, the, the top of the ribbon and the side of the ribbon, that is. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a nice little gradient overlay. So just select gradient overlay here. And we're going to use that same gradient. And I didn't learn last time when I mentioned we should save the gradient. So I'm going to remake the gradient again. Double click that. And we're working with 606060. Hit OK. And OK again. We're going to set this gradient to 45. And again, we're going to knock the scale way down. So we can really see sort of that gray to white transition. Knocking it down to about 10% works nicely. Blend mode, soft light. 
and we're gonna reduce the opacity to about 50%. So something like that's cool. And of course, last but not least, we need to throw a little pattern overlay over this. So I'll just choose a pattern that looks kind of cool. Scale it way down so it just looks kind of noisy. Set the blend mode to soft light. And there we go. We've got a cool little just kind of grainy pattern. Maybe we're gonna reduce the opacity just a touch there. And then hit OK. Now, all we have left to do is go ahead and burn the edges in to give this uh, sort of that three-dimensional curving look. So we're going to create a new layer. We're going to go layer, new layer, and we're going to name this layer burn. And we're also just going to tick on this little box here. Use previous layer to create clipping mask. Hit OK. You can see this little arrow has appeared basically saying, hey, anything on this layer, I'm going to act like the layer beneath me is a layer mask and you're not going to see anything. So just for example, I'm just going to take my rectangular marquee tool and draw this rectangle and fill it with blue. You can see it only is going to appear where it crosses through that shape that we have on the layer beneath it. I'm going to undo that blue rectangle because that is not what we want. We're going to grab the brush tool here. We're going to set our foreground and background colors to the default. Let's just hit the letter D. Foreground color is black. That's the important thing. Zoom out a little bit. And I've just grabbed a nice big brush here. 175 pixels uh, in size and a hardness of zero. It's got these very soft, um, fluffy edges. Now that we've got this brush, um, it's just a simple round brush, by the way. What we want to do is go ahead and start painting some black in there. That's way too much. I just clicked to get away from the, uh, the little dialogue. What I'm really going to do is I'm not even going to put the edge of the brush over the, the edge of my ribbon. I'm just going to kind of hang out here and just dust it until it looks to be about the same green as the edge that's wrapping down and around our shape. So just a couple clicks and there we have it. So just like that. We've created that sort of nice rounded look. Now all we have to do is throw some text down there. So I'm going to grab that 562 horsepower text layer, hold down my Alt or Option key, drag this up to the top, hit Command or Control T to free transform it. And we're going to rotate this guy all the way around uh, 90 degrees or so. 90 degrees looks about right. There we go. We're going to drag it down onto this ribbon. And I don't know, we'll throw a price down there. We'll just say dollar sign 250 capital K for 250,000. I have no idea if that's the proper price or not, but it sounds about right. So there we go. You can see that in less than a half hour, we've went, we've walked through creating a straight on ribbon. We've created a sharp angled corner ribbon, and we've also created a more rounded corner ribbon. So pick your choice of ribbons. They're very popular in graphic design and web design and just design in general uh, these days. And that's it for this one. So I hope you've learned a thing or two. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Like us on Facebook and make sure you follow me on Twitter at Tutvid, T-U-T-V-I-D. Thanks for watching.